The Flying Carpet. Biff's carpet was torn. It had a big hole in it. Biff showed Dad, but he said, "We can't afford a new one." Sorry, Biff. Biff and Chip were shopping with Dad. Dad wanted to buy a bookcase for Kipper's room. They saw one outside the junk shop. "I will get this for Kipper," said Dad. Biff found an old carpet in the back of the shop. "This would do for my room," she said. She asked Dad if she could have it. Dad looked at the old carpet. "You don't want that thing," he said. "It's old and dirty." "But I like it," said Biff. "Please, may I have it?" So Dad said, "Yes, as long as it doesn't cost too much." Biff bit the carpet. It was full of dust and dirt. I didn't think a carpet could be so dusty," she said. "I wonder who had it last. Someone who didn't wipe their feet." Biff and Mom gave the carpet a shampoo. "I don't think it has ever had a shampoo before," said Biff. "It looks better already." The carpet looked beautiful. "It is a nice carpet," said Biff. "I told you so." It looks quite old, so maybe it's worth a lot of money. Biff was in a bedroom reading a book. Kipper came in, and they sat on Biff's new carpet. Kipper was learning to read, and he wanted to read to Biff. Suddenly, the magic key began to glow. Another adventure had begun. This time, Biff and Kipper were on a flying carpet. This is a new kind of adventure," said Biff. "The carpet is coming with us." The carpet went very fast. "Oh, help!" said Keeper. "I hope we don't fall off." The carpet flew on and on. It flew over desert and mountains. "I wonder where we are going," said Biff. At last, the carpet slowed down. Biff and Keeper looked. Over the side, the carpet was flying over a town. I have never seen a town like this one," said Biff. "I wonder if we are going to land." But the carpet didn't land. Instead, it went slower and slower. Then it stopped by a window at the top of a tower. "I wonder why we have stopped here," said Keeper. Biff and Keeper looked through the window. They saw a little boy. He was crying, and he looked very unhappy. He must be a prisoner," said Biff. Biff and Keeper climbed into the little room. When the boy saw them, he jumped up in surprise. "Why are you locked up in this tower?" asked Biff. "What have you done?" "I am the real king of this land," said the boy sadly. But my wicked uncle locked me in this tower. When I was king, everyone was happy. I promised to rule the country wisely and well. But my uncle was jealous. He wanted to be the king instead. One day, my uncle and his soldiers attacked the palace. They captured me and put me in prison. My mother escaped. She ran away to the mountains and took her army with her. My uncle is a bad man. He is cruel and greedy. He makes the people pay him money even if they are poor. If they can't pay, he puts them in prison. Nobody is happy. Every day, the people ask my mother and her army to attack the city. She will not give the order to attack. Because she is afraid my uncle will harm me, I am a hostage in this palace. Then we must set you free," said Biff. "The carpet would take us to your mother." Biff and Keeper helped the boy to climb out of the window. Then they all sat on the carpet. "How do you make it fly?" asked Keeper. "How will it know where to take us?" Make a wish," said Biff. "Then it will go where we want it to." They made the wish, 
and the carpet zoomed off. The carpet sped toward the mountains. At last, it began to slow down. I hope he knows how to land," said Keeper. "It looks a long way down." The carpet landed safely. When the boy's mother saw him, she couldn't believe her eyes. She looked at the carpet and she looked at Biff and Keeper. "My son is safe," she said. "Thank you." The boy's mother called all her soldiers. She told them her son was free. Now he is safe. We can attack the city," she said. "My son will be king again!" "Hooray!" shouted the soldiers. They came down from the mountains and marched to the city. There was a big battle. Biff, Keeper, and the boy watched the battle from a safe place. When the battle was over, everyone was pleased that the boy was king again. But the boy was not pleased. "Where is my uncle?" he asked. He must be punished for what he did. Biff and Keeper saw someone running away. It was the wicked uncle. Oh no! said Keeper. He is getting away. How can we stop him? Biff had the magic carpet with her. I wonder if she thought. Biff made a wish, and the magic carpet flew off the wicked uncle. The wicked uncle rolled as fast as he could, but the carpet was faster. Stop him! called Biff. The carpet pulled the wicked uncle from his horse. It wrapped itself round him, and then it rolled him back to the city. Help! Help! called the wicked uncle. Get this carpet off me! Biff and Keeper took the wicked uncle to the boy. Thank you," he said. "It's my uncle's turn to go to prison. Now I can be a good king and look after my people again." The boy gave Biff Keeper a present. It was a beautiful toy camel. "Thank you," they said. Suddenly, the magic key began to glow. "It's time for us to go," said Biff. "But we will take our carpet if you don't mind." The magic key took Biff and Keeper home. What an adventure," said Keeper. "Do you think if I wish very hard, the carpet will take me to school each day?" "You'll be lucky," said Biff. A day in London. Gran came to stay. The children ran to meet her. "Hooray!" said Keeper. I love it when Gran comes to stay. She is good and fun. Gran brought presents for everyone. She gave Mom and Dad an ornament. Kipa had some little golf clubs, and Biff and Chip had a keyboard. Thanks, Gran," said everyone. "I have another surprise for you," said Gran. She gave the children some funny-looking parcels. What are they? Asked Keeper. Boomerangs, said Gran. The children wanted to see how the boomerangs worked. Gran took them outside. She threw a boomerang, and it whizzed through the air. Look out! Shouted Gran. Keeper wanted to play with the golf clubs. Gran showed him what to do. She hit the ball, but she hit it too hard, and it smashed the window. Oh dear," said Gran. Next day, Will, Wilma, Nadim, and Anina came to play. Biff and Chip showed them the keyboard. Gran had a good idea. Let's have a band," she said. The band made a lot of noise, and the children had a good time. Whatever will Gran do next?" said Dad. "She's worse than the children," said Mom. Gran had promised to take the children on an outing. She said that Nadim and Anina could go too. "I will take you all to London," she said. "Look after Gran," said Mom as they got into the car. "Try and stop her getting into trouble." "We'll do our best," said Biff. "But it won't be easy." 
When they got to London, Grant parked the car. Now we will take the tube," said Grant. "It's the best way to get around." There were lots of people waiting on the platform. When the train came in, everyone rushed to get on. Now I know why it's called a tube," said Adina. "Everyone gets squeezed." They went to Trafalgar Square. On top of the column was a statue of Nelson. I wouldn't like to be up there," said Biff. "I don't like heights." There were lots of pigeons in Trafalgar Square. Grand bought some nuts. The children fed the pigeons. "Oh, help!" said Nadim. "I didn't know that pigeons were so greedy." They went to Buckingham Palace. This is where the Queen lives," said Grand. "It's enormous," said Nina. "The Queen must be busy with all those rooms to clean." A big car drove past, and everyone cheered and waved. The children couldn't see who was inside the car. "Perhaps it's the Queen," said Biff. Grand took them on a boat. They went on the Tower Bridge. The children were excited because the bridge began to open. It began to rain and the wind blew. Everyone felt cold. Never mind," said Grand. "We will think of somewhere warm to go next." They went to the waxworks. "What is a waxworks?" asked Keeper as they went in. "It has wax models of famous people," said Anina. They looked at the models. Don't they look funny? said Keeper. You can tell they are models and not real people, said Anina. Who are these people? asked Keeper. That is Queen Victoria, said Gran, and some of her grandchildren. She had lots of grandchildren, said Nadim. Queen Victoria looks very fierce, said Biff. I bet she wasn't like you, Gran. Well, I wouldn't like to be a queen," said Gran. "It must be a hard job." They looked at the street scene. "This is what London was like a long time ago," said Gran. "A lot of people were very poor. Poor children didn't go to school in those days. They had to work instead," said Gran. That boy carrying brushes is a sweep. His job was to climb up chimneys and brush soot down. Gran went off to look at the royal family, while the children stayed at the street scene. Do you think Gran should go off by herself? said Biff. She can't do much harm in here, said Chip. Gran dropped her handbag, and some money rolled among the models. Gran went to pick it up. As she bent down, she knocked into the waxworks, and they began to fall over. Gran picked the models up and put the hats back on. The children couldn't believe it. Gran, what are you doing? said Biff. Don't just stand there, said Gran. Help me pick the models up before anyone sees. Oh, Gran, said Biff. I let you out of my sight for a second, and this happens. They picked the models up and put the hats back on. They look strange," said Anina. "I don't think the hats are right." "Oh no," said Gran. A lady ran up. She was very cross with Gran. "I can't think how you knocked the models over in the first place," she said. It's never happened before. I'm very sorry," said Gran. "I don't know," said Biff. "I don't think they will let Gran in the waxworks again." "Never mind," said Chip. "Gran didn't mean to knock them over." "Thank you for a great day out," said Nadim. "We had never been to London before. I liked the ride on the boats best," said Keeper. Even if it was cold, I liked everything," said Anina. 
Home at last, said Gran. We can tell Mom some of our adventures, but not all of them, and not the one about beheading the Queen. Victorian Adventure Biff and Chip had been to London with Gran. They had some pictures, which they put into a scrapbook. They wanted to take the book to school. Gran came into Biff's room to look at the children's scrapbook. We had a great time in London, said Biff. Thank you, Gran. Gran was pleased. Suddenly, the magic key glowed. It was time for an adventure. The magic took the children into the little house. But did it take Gran? The magic took them back in time to a street on a foggy day. A boy was standing under a gas lamp. He looked at the children in surprise. Excuse me, said Biff. Do you know where we are? Don't you know, said the boy. This is London. He took his cap off. It wasn't a boy, it was a girl. I'm called Vicky, said the girl. I'm called Vicky after the Queen. What Queen? asked Biff. Queen Victoria, said Vicky. Don't you know anything? I'm hungry, said Vicky. Have you got any money? No, sorry, said the children. Come on then, said Vicky. I know where we can get some. Follow me. They followed Vicky down winding streets. At last, they came to a blacksmith's. The blacksmith was looking at a horse's hoop. The horse needed a new shoe. Got any jobs, mister? asked Vicky. I will give you a penny to pump the bellows, said the blacksmith. The children pumped and pumped until the fire glowed hot. It was hard work. The children were hot and thirsty. Vicky took them to a pump and everyone had a drink. Then Vicky pumped the water and the children washed their faces. The children were hungry. Vicky took them to a baker shop. She bought some bread with the penny. She gave some to Biff, Chip and Keeper. The bread was hot and it smelled good. Next, Vicky took them to a street with a high wall. A boy called Jack was waiting there. He looked at Biff, Chip and Keeper. Who are they? he asked. They are my new friends, she said. They all climbed on the wall. They had to help Keeper up. They could see a big house. It's Buckingham Palace, said Biff. We saw it when we went to London with Gran. Suddenly a light flashed at a window. It flashed on and off. It was flashing at Jack and Vicky. Jack had a lamp. He shone it back. Good, he said. Come on, follow me. The children jumped off the wall and ran to the palace. Keep down, called Jack, and run fast. And they all ran towards it. There were three children inside. They were the grandchildren of Queen Victoria. They are standing with the Queen, but it isn't much fun for them, said Vicky. We come to play with them every night. The Queen's grandchildren looked at Biff, Chip and Keeper. They are my new friends, said Vicky. They have come to play tonight. Great! Now, we can have some real fun, said one of the grandchildren. The children played together. First, they played hide and seek. Then they played tag. After that, they played hopscotch. Biff and Chip taught them how to play basketball. This is a good game, said one of the grandchildren. How did you learn to play it? We saw it on television, said Chip. On what? asked Jack. Um, never mind, said Chip. It's fun playing in a palace, said Keeper. 
but will we see Queen Victoria? I hope not, said Vicky. We shouldn't be here. If the grown-ups find out, there will be trouble. At that moment, a grown-up came in and saw them. Oh no, said everyone. Trouble. The grown-ups were very cross. They were cross with all the children. I told you there would be trouble, said Vicky. The royal grandchildren were sent to bed. A policeman came to take the others away. This is a serious matter, said the policeman. You're not allowed to play with the queen's grandchildren. Come along with me. The children were taken to a police station. They were locked up. You can't go home until we find your mothers and fathers, said the policeman. Oh no, said Biff. We will be here forever. I don't like this adventure, said Keeper. It isn't much fun. He wanted the magic key to glow, but it wouldn't. The next day, an important man came to see the children. The queen has sent for you, he said. Come with me. The policeman let them out. The important man took them to Buckingham Palace. Do you think we are going to have our heads chopped off? Asked Keeper. Gran was having a tea with Queen Victoria. Gran, said she. What are you doing in our adventure? I'm having an adventure of my own, said Gran. Queen Victoria looked at all the children and smiled. Your grandmother has told me that you are good children, she said. You can play with my grandchildren and stay to tea. The children played in the throne room. They had a sack race. Come on, Biff! Called Gran. Come on, Vicky! Called the Queen. This is fun! Everyone said. You can have one more race, said the Queen. And then it will be time for tea. I hope you like scones and homemade strawberry jam. The magic key began to glow. It was time for the adventure to end. Goodbye, said Keeper. Thank you for having us. It was a pleasure, said Queen Victoria. Do come again. <laughs>